And why'd he make you so special? Why did he bless you? Think about it. I woke up this morning. I woke up this morning. Got a smile when I say that shit. I woke up this morning. Go. All right, Grandma, we're on. Okay, Jordan, what do you want to know about life? Uh, so before we were, we started this podcast, we were talking about free will and uh-huh. if anything's determined. So let me ask you this. like, in, Do you believe that certain things, like, for example, the, the iPhone, do you think if Steve Jobs never existed, never was born, do you think that inevitably the iPhone would, or not, not necessarily the iPhone, but something that would give humans the instant connection that we have today? Do you think that inevitably would happen? Or like somebody like Darwin would come along to come up with a, just a breakthrough idea, like the theory of evolution? Do you think that... Well, I think... Yeah, I think it probably would have. I don't know that that's predestination uh, or, uh, or predetermination of what's going to happen. I think it's more just people, intelligent people coming up with ideas all the time and thinking about things. If you're thinking about something, if you wait too long, somebody else thinks about it. If you're thinking about invent- inventing something, I've had that happen a lot of times. But like something like... It's whether you act on that. Something so big, like Thomas Edison inviting, inventing the light bulb. Obviously, it's a common need. We need light, so somebody would probably come in and 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 invent that. You're saying that 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 would happen. I think that would eventually he happen. It, he was just a unique person that was willing to spend, do the trial and error and spend the time, invest in the time and right. effort to do it. So it would take someone else to do that. So what did you say? I mean, you, in a way you could argue that's a deterministic universe, that that that's going to happen inevitably. But I, I also, I see what you're saying. Like you're, and I, I kind of agree with you, like, it, cause it is a common need and like the, the need to communicate like, it, uh, so instantly, like, like, I feel like that would have happened eventually. I think somebody would have come through and had the breakthrough ideas if it weren't Steve Jobs. Well, the world is evolving and people are getting smarter all the time. So, you know, and and people that think about things, they'll come up with inventions. And it's just whether you have the determination to go through with it and not just inventions, but ideas and whether you think things out and whether you have the ability to present them, you know. And I don't think you're, I think you make your own destiny. I think you have the ability for certain things. It's whether you act on it, but that's your free will. Okay. So do you have, let's say, let's say for example, your children. And obviously, so if you, if my mother was to be conceived, let's say two years later, for whatever reason, that means I would have to be a completely different person. I'd have a different genetic makeup. I'd be born at a different point in time, most likely. How would you have a different genetic makeup? I'd be married to the same person two years later. Two years later, you could argue that she wanted to find the same husband because of the age gap, that maybe they would have never crossed paths in life because she was two years behind where she is in life. And maybe maybe she wasn't the person that she was whenever she met my dad that my dad was so attracted to her for. So you could argue that. So then that's a whole 23 chromosomes that are completely different about me. Yeah. And the timing is completely different. And I feel like... I mean, I don't understand biology enough, but I, I feel like, uh, like I could have been a totally different person, even even under my same. Like, I mean, look at my sister, look at me. You know, we're very different people, and I could like if they if those two people cr- could have created me, but it would have been a different me. If that does that make sense? I don't know if I'm articulating that. Yeah, you're articulating it okay. I just, I would have to think about that one. You're unique. 
as everybody is, but I, I don't... But I wouldn't be unique in the same ways that... I feel like uh, a lot of things are... With, with me personally, I feel like a lot of things are genetically almost determined on how my personality is. And I feel like a lot of a lot of people are kind of that way too. I think you're you're it's kind of the nature versus nurture kind of deal. And my nature would be very different. Well, if your mother married a different person, you would have different characteristics. Well, absolutely. But let's say that they both got married, but let's let's say let's use the same argument that she's 2 years behind where she is in life. And she's the same person somehow. She wouldn't be, though. She wouldn't be. That's my whole argument, that she wouldn't be the same person. If yeah, but the genetic cheap. makeup would be the same. Be similar, but it wouldn't be the same. Why wouldn't it be the same if she married your dad? Your genetic makeup would be the same. Yeah, you but, better take that biology course this year. <laughs> no, I'm saying, I'm saying if... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Like, if I was born five years later, just because, like, oh, it's a different egg, it's a different sperm, and I, I just would, I would develop different, you know, like. Yeah, that I don't know. No? I, I think I would. I I think it's kind of random as far Probably. as that goes. Yeah. So I would, I would be a different person. Maybe I'd be, I don't know, I'd, I'd be unique, obviously, at least I would argue that, that. I would argue the exact same thing that everybody's unique in their own way, but I'd be a different person. I'd be a different point in my life if I was born a few years later as well. Yeah. But is that free will or is that already subconsciously predetermined? I don't think that's what free will is. You uh -huh. know, free will and it's not predetermination. I think I think free will is you're you're given opportunities, you're given you're given chances and your free will is whether you take advantage of them or whether you do what just how you respond to them yeah how you respond to it mm -hmm. your thought process and everything and um, that probably whether you utilize your free will is probably um, influenced by the way you were or how you how you utilize your free will because everybody obviously utilizes their free will. They're yeah, how you decisions. utilize it just depends partially upon your your upbringing and your history and your background and everything and what you have uh, within your head, you know, uh -huh. as to how you look at things. Okay. So. So it's all perspective. Mm-hmm. Your past experience. Yeah, I would agree. But... Are your kids, you having kids, and those kids being who they are, is that necessarily free will, or is that determined, deterministic? Well, I don't think free will is, is what you're talking about. You're talking more about predestination. Mm -hmm. Are they predestined uh, like, to be somebody different? Right, right. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking at about. At a then. different time. That but did you have the free will to choose to conceive them whenever, and then they were genetically determined to be who they are? Yes, you have free will to do so it's So you could argue that kids, like just people in general are a combination of random, deterministic, and free will. Because you have the free will to conceive them whenever you choose. And you have the free will as to whether you keep them or not. Yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> and how you raise them. And all the decisions that you make and how you raise Everything them, you're right. Everything affects them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But there are so many things determined as well, like the time... Well, I, with... With child rearing, you can get this child that you cannot raise two children the same way. Uh -huh. You know, you have to you have to look at their personalities and to, as to what works with them. You know, and and some children are be, going to be more difficult, and I don't know if it's their personalities, if it's their life experiences, because no two people have the same life experiences. Right. So. How does that child's life experience 
how does that affect them? You know, when, like, even, even our children, our four children, they all have different life experiences, you know, because they were born at different times. So is it the life experiences or is it what, how they were born, their genetic makeup? So you're talking... And it's probably a combination of both. Absolutely. I think that's what most psychologists would agree with. Yeah. Because it's a combination. But a lot of things are, as far as the nature side of that goes, they are already genetically predetermined. Certain... Um, yeah, they will have a tendency, I think, to, towards certain things. Like some people will be more athletic than others. Right. Some people are just smarter than others. Some people have a more gentle spirit. And so you take that and then it's your, it's the life experiences and how they're raised. And that's why mothering, motherhood, I think is so important and, fa and being a father and, and being tuned in to who your kids are and everything because you can you can look at the type of personality they have and and the talents and the things they have and you you can't force somebody who has no musical talent to be a a great pianist or something like that right or you know if you have no talent for singing you can't force them to be a great singer you can you can get do you the believe a strong amount of desire though can it almost overcome them. those those natural barriers. I think singing is different. Singing is different because you you. I mean, your voice is hard to change. You know, it's it's hard well, to manipulate. You can take voice lessons, and you can probably become a good singer. But to be great, and to be somebody that just has this awesome voice, and of course, that's also in the person listening to it. Mm -hmm. Some of the music you listen to, I don't think so great, and you like it, so. <laughs> <laughs> but a, a part of that comes with, you gotta, with, at least this is how I, this is how I like to view music, is how music can, more than anything else, it, music can bring people together, and you gotta, you gotta kind of detach yourself from the actual music and what somebody's hearing. So, for example, with me, like, I like to listen to rap music. And that's not all I like to listen to, but I, uh, rap music, I would say, is like up there on my, uh, if I'm going to choose something to play just randomly, it's going to be some kind of rap. And why do you likely. like that? Because, see, I like classical music, which... Well, it's, you see, and, and that's hard for me to understand that you like that, but it, I think it's cooler to think about how the music makes you feel that way and, like, how... I, I've always found it really intriguing, like, how you can hear something, I can hear something, and, like, I'm jamming to it, I'm loving it, it makes me feel, like, some and kind of way. And it's noise And then, me. yeah, to you, you just want that music off. You're like, turn <laughs> this off. Right. Uh, Isn't that, that, that's cool, though, to, like, be able to, like, detach yourself from, like, for example, uh, I don't know, like, a type of music I really hate that a lot of people in my generation love is trap music, which... That if you don't like rap music, I promise you, you will hate trap music. You will hate it. And it's very, very ignorant music, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, it just talks about a ton of... It's kind of probably what your interpretation of rap is. But, like, it's what it really... Like, they just talk about just disrespectful to girls, just drugs. And, it, like, the way that... The way it sounds, it just makes me feel stupid then that's my opinion. Like, I hate this kind of music. Like, I absolutely hate it. But if you if you go to a party and people are listening to that, they're just up dancing. Just And it, you have to be able to, like, kind of detach wonder. yourself from the actual music and be like, wow, the this worst. is cool that this, this sound that somebody made can make somebody else feel like this. But see... You're responsible for what you put in your in your head, in uh -huh. your brain. And that's why I would never listen to that type of music because you you have to be totally responsible for what you put in your head because what's this rap music and that type of stuff, it's putting that stuff in your head. And you, I guarantee, are going to think of that later with just your... It's just going to come back to you, whether it be the beat of the music or whatever it is. Subconsciously, yeah. I, I agree to an extent. Yeah. And but... so so that, I don't want that stuff in my head. Uh-huh. You know, I, want, I like to think thoughts that are going to be 
I like maybe I'm living in la la land, but I like to take th like to think thoughts that are going to add to my self rather than detract from myself. And you know, and I know you would not be involved in anything that this rap music, you know. Well, would you and I can both agree that empathy is a very important thing. A right. Very important. It's 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 an art. It's a skill, and it's. Uh, I, I, I find that to be really important. So anyway, would you agree that this is how this is what I like about rap music in particular, like uh, when they talk about like, uh, let's say, for example, Jay-Z. Jay-Z is a rapper from the I think he I don't know. I don't know much about Jay-Z, but I know he rapped in like the late 90s. He had to before he was a rapper. He grew up in a really bad place, just where his people were kind of oppressed in the inner cities. I think he lived in, I think he's from New York. Most like 100% positive he's from New York. And he had to, um, apparently he had to deal cocaine to like, to like make it and then make it as a rapper. And obviously I'm not going to go just deal cocaine because it, I don't even really necessarily look up For to Jay-Z. Right, right. <laughs> but... Uh, that's probably a bad example. My my point is though that like a lot of these rappers, they came from a really bad place, and they made something out of themselves. So I kind of like that aspect of like it doesn't really matter where you're from. Like you can always you can always make it to somewhere more. Like like for example, Chance the Rapper. This is somebody I look up to. This is he um, he is from the like inner cities of Chicago, and he's seen a lot of violence, a lot of like. Just, I don't know, just not good in the world. And he really found himself, like, growing up. And he ended up getting kicked out of school for 10 days, made a mixtape uh, called The 10 Day. Got kind of famous, then made another album, got really famous. And now he's, like, huge. And he, he uh, he's not even that rich, honestly. He gives away all his music for free. He, uh... He's all about love. He's just a, he's a really good person. He gave away a million dollars to the school system that kicked him out. To and he's always trying to help out Chicago, always giving back. Like I think that's really cool that he he's well is his is his rap music derogatory music? In what sense? Uh, to women to No. Okay. That's a different story. He's using his talent for good. Mhm. Mm I think when you're just putting down women and calling them these names and talking about drugs. Yeah. And you're and and people in the inner city and younger people see that and they see that this guy's making a lot of money and he's successful doing that and they want to be like him. Absolutely. Let's let's put a better image out there. I agree. I and I would I would hundred percent agree with you. Like there are yeah, like, I think that's a big problem with my generation is that I always actually, I always joke around. I'm like, you know what we need? We need more kids to drop out of college to become aspiring rappers. And <laughs> I, I always say that, like, just jokingly. Because there are so many people that just have this unrealistic image of themselves. They think they're so special for whatever reason. And I do think we're all special to some extent, but they just, they it's this, like, ego thing that, like, and they just think they, they should be able to, I don't know, not go to, I don't know, just, they, they all want to become rappers. Everybody seems well, to want to be a Well, this is an enabled now. generation. They're looking for the easy way out on a lot of things. Uh-huh. And, uh. Let's talk about my generation. Let's keep talking about it. I, <laughs> I like this time, because I like, because I'm, I'm living in my generation, and I have some criticisms as well, and you're uh, looking down. My biggest down. thing is, is parents who entitle their kids. And, you know, your entitled people just really annoy me because it's like I, I'm i special, everybody else should do for me, but I don't have any responsibility for the rest of this world. You know, you have a, we're all in this together mm -hmm. and we need to all learn to do our share. And I'm not just talking about work, I'm, I'm talking about... Um, not just being so selfish, mm -hmm. you know. I agree. I agree a hundred percent. And um, because I mean, I've just seen so many 
entitled young people. And this generation, it's, it's in the business that I'm in, I see it a lot with the younger generation. They, it, it they kinda, don't consider other people. They're inconsiderate. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's and what it, do I need and when do I need it and how are you going to get it for me? That's a terrible way to think. And I, I totally agree with you. That is, I know your generation labels my generation as entitled and narcissistic. And I think that does, uh, I think that's super accurate. So accurate. And I think entitlement leads to a form of self pity. And self pity is destructive. That's terrible. Yeah. Self pity is very destructive. It's. Uh, Go do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I don't know. I've seen a lot of it, and it's very annoying, you know, and uh, I... Because self-pity leads to excuses. You start well, making excuses for yourself, for your actions, You for do, and entitlement leads to a lack of motivation, and it, it mm -hmm. leads to a lack of, um, I can do this for myself, you know, it, it makes you very dependent. It makes you very dependent, and you think everybody should do it for you, and they should give to you, and you shouldn't have to work for it. Mm -hmm. And the ones of this generation who are willing to work for what they what they want, and not just I'm not just saying get a job or whatever, but you should always do the best job you can possibly do in whatever you're doing. If you can't do a good job in that, then get out of it and do something else. Right. You know. And, and they don't look at the other person's point of view. Like, they'll get a job and they just think, oh, they should just pay me, but I don't really have to do anything, you know. And they think they ought to be able to take off whenever they want or do whatever they want. They don't think about that person who's put their blood, sweat, and tears into that business, you know, to give them a job, you know. So I don't care what it is. You always should do the best job that you can or you should and if you don't like it you should do something else. Uh, but if you're entitled and you uh, I know some of the people that are of your generation or a little bit older they're just not going to do certain things. They'll just let somebody else support them. Right. You know. And uh, you know if you want to live in mommy's basement forever go ahead. But I, I would think it destroys your self respect. When you, and your self-image. And your self-image. And you get to the point, if you're so entitled, parents that in, entitle their children are doing them a terrible disservice because they're not letting that child have the... They're not letting them know that they can do for themselves, that they can take care of themselves, that they can be independent. You know, so... I think there are levels to maturity. Like, you have to... You have to be... If you're dependent... The next step is being independent, and obviously, when you're you're in upbringing, you're going to be somewhat dependent. You get less and less dependent on your parents as the years go by, and uh, I don't think anybody's fully independent. But then after, after you can't be, and I think the ending step of that is interdependence, being able to work with other people. But you can't get there without being independent. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like there are levels to it. I just think parents do that because, like, for instance, they'll put their kid on a sports team, and if, if their child is not as good as somebody else and maybe they don't get as much recognition, you know, they're, they're just likely to confront the coach, you know, or to take that child off that team. Or they're making excuses for their making kids. Making excuses. And, and then so their kid starts making excuses they have, for themselves. They don't have unrealistic expectations of what their kid can do. And uh, maybe that child doesn't advance to the next level, but maybe they shouldn't. Maybe they should work a little harder. That's what I've always admired about your mother, because she's always said, you know, she's never made excuses for you. Right. You know, she's like, if you want to do something, then you got to do be a little better at it. You practice. Right. You do whatever. So. Yeah, I agree with that mentality 100%. Yeah. I mean, as a grandma, I felt sorry sometimes for you guys because I'm like, oh, come on. And she's <laughs> she's like, no. <laughs> yeah, don't be sorry. Be better. Yeah, yeah. That's, Absolutely. That's, she never let you make excuses. 
I'm not saying she always got you to do what she, what you thought you should do or have, but um, it doesn't hurt a child to cry. A little bit of, um, a little bit of pain makes you stronger. Absolutely, you can you use know. pain as motivation. You get your feelings hurt, you learn how to deal with it. You don't always fix it for somebody, you know. Yeah, I agree. You te you learn how to handle it. Your child gets their feelings hurt, then uh, you you talk to them and you help them to try to understand the situation, and you you teach them to stand up for themselves if it was unjust. So. Yeah, excuses are terrible. And going back to what you were saying earlier, uh, I think that entitlement kind of leads to a more like selfish. Well, I, I think you you actually said that exactly. Totally selfish. And it makes you. And whenever you become more selfish instead of selfless, you you just frankly just come become a worse person, like a lesser person. It's just and, like it's me, 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 me. And you're unable to empathize with other people. I, th like we were saying earlier, I think empathy is so important. Mm -hmm. it's so important. You have to treat other people the way you want to be treated. It's the golden rule, and that really is the mm -hmm. golden rule for a reason. Like yeah. that is undeniably like that's ancient wisdom, and that's going to forever. As long I don't care how advanced technology gets, like. That will always be the golden rule. That is so important. But I see that all the time where it's just, I want, I want, I want. And it's so refreshing to see somebody that thinks about the other person. Right. You know, and uh, they, you don't, I, I just think you gain so much more and so much happiness as a person if you think about the other person. Not to well mention you also receive more as well. Yeah. You're, the more you give, the more you receive. Mm -hmm. What's the, what's that word? It's a the word for being like very selfless. And I literally just looked it up. It, I I looked it up the other day because I I heard it. Um, I heard somebody say it, and I can. It starts with an A. I'm not sure which word you're thinking of. I don't know. I I can't think of it. it we'll sit here all day if we try to think mm -hmm. of it. But it's a. Uh, Oh, it's going to bother me. I'm totally going to look that up after this. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I agree. And I also, I think, I think sports, like I've noticed the type of person somebody is like on the, I mean, my subjective experience is, uh, soccer and really any sport, but I think the type of athlete you are really has a lot to do with the type of person you are if you if somebody especially like a if you get up to like as old as like a high school level or college level if they're the type of player to make excuses for themselves constantly and like always find a reason they're usually one of the worst players on the field yeah i think one of my i don't think my greatest skill has anything to do with my actual skills in soccer i think i got those skills because i was being extremely honest with myself that I was on I was able to overlook my ego and accept criticism and I think really it I, I think a lot of my skill like why I would be better let's say I'm better than a, uh, I don't know we're on a team and I'm better than I don't know say I'm like the fifth best player and I'm better than all these other players I think that really the main differentiating differentiating factor would be that I accept criticism better than they do and I, I improve on what I'm bad at well it's it's not a lot of times it's not looking at things as, as criticism but looking at, at it as things that you can improve on you know you're not necessarily being criticized for what you're doing you're being told how you can get better and it's unreal how few people understand that yeah, I think sports are so important because it can teach, it can teach somebody. Not everybody's going to be an excellent athlete, but everybody can play sports at some level. Absolutely, and it teaches them teamwork. It teaches them, uh, you know, it teaches them that they're not going to be able to just go there out there and and look nice and stand there and not do anything because your teammates won't like that. So it teaches you a lot about 
uh, teamwork. It teaches you to be selfless. It teaches you if you if you get the right in the right situation. And everybody can play some kind of team sport. It doesn't have they don't have to be on a top level team. They don't have to have or an individual sport. Some people prefer that. I think it's important that you do both. Okay. Okay. I I would uh, I always like the concept of a team sport and then an individual sport if you can if you can do that. But let's face it, how many of these you see thousands literally in our area of kids out playing soccer? Mm-hmm. How many of those are ever going to go to a higher level? Not you pretty, know, not too many. Not too many, but it, when you see the parents pushing them and yelling at them, and you know, I, I think parents should. Be careful which team they're on, but I think they should let the child achieve what they can achieve without screaming and yelling and kind of hands off approach. Yeah, hands off approach. You're totally and, right because I don't know how many times like parents will yell at somebody, like the coach's son. They're notoriously yeah. bad. <laughs> like I think I've only played with one coach's son that was somewhat decent, <laughs> but uh, and we won't say which one. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter who. <laughs> but. Uh, I, I, you, whenever you yell at that kid, it's just going to build resentment between your kid and you, you know? I, yeah. Think about how many relationships, I mean, I, I don't know like specifically how many, but I, I, I know a few that relationships that were ruined because their dads were too hard on them on the field. Right. I, I had a friend we were playing with one game. He got the, I don't even remember how he broke his arm. I think somebody kicked a soccer ball at it so hard that he literally snapped his arm. And I don't remember exactly, but his dad yelled at him for breaking his arm. Yeah, because we were, we were in the car. We uh, were, like, carpooling with them. We carpooled with them to the game, and we were with them later, and he was, like, just screaming at him. And not, not, like, screaming at him, but just kind of, like, getting on to him for breaking his arm. See, so much of this is a power trip for parents, and they need to, they need to sit back and let their kids get what they can get out of sports. This is not for the parents. This is for the kids. You had your opportunity to play, or if you want to sign up for a team and go play, go play. Right, right. And see how you like it if your kid's standing on the sideline yelling at you to run faster. You know? But I think they should all have to do that, because I don't think they would like it. Uh, You should help your child to be better, and you should help them, encourage them if they want to be better to practice. Maybe they're not interested. Don't force them to play if they're not interested. Find something they are interested in. Right. You know. And also on top of the criticism, wait, were you going to say something? I was just going to say not everybody has to be an athlete, but everybody needs to have physical fitness in their life. True, true. Well, now studies are showing that, like, mm-hmm. people are a lot smarter even. Like, your your brain just works better when you have endorphins yeah. flowing, when, you, when you're physically in shape. Mm-hmm. Plus, when you eat healthy as well, your brain works a lot better. But um, I think it, I, I'm also a huge fan of, uh, in sports, and really just anything, uh, not, not just criticism, because criticism by itself is... Uh, I think it, I think it can be more destructive than anything, but I'm I'm a huge fan of positive reinforcement. Well, there's right, but there's constructive criticism and there's destructive criticism, and positive reinforcement is always better. It's uh, you know you can tell somebody they're bad one time, and it takes a bunch more times to tell them they're good to get that out of their head that they're bad. Right. You could you could agree with that. I think. Somebody who's kind of conquered themselves and they're able to say, I, I think personally at this point in my life, with the, with the little kid, I think it's different. But with me, I think criticism's worth a lot more than compliments are. But uh, I think compliments well, are important. But like a little kid, they haven't really conquered themselves yet. They haven't really, uh, they don't really even understand who they are yet, you know? Yeah. They uh, And criticism... Even positive, like you were saying, it can positive criticism can be a little bit destructive, but I I think there should be like an eighty twenty rule, like a, the pre show principle. I think that should be uh, like positivity, positive reinforcement on and um, and criticism. There should be some balance, but definitely a lot more. I think regardless, there should be a lot more positivity. Well, usually, kids know what they've done wrong. 
they may not admit it, but they know what they've done wrong. Mm -hmm. So it's much more beneficial just to tell them um, how they can do it better. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely. You know, and I I think that's really important. It's important for their self esteem, but this just feeding them, oh, you're so great, blah 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 blah. That's not going to get it because it's just going to make them think I am the greatest and false confidence. Yeah, you know they need to learn learn to work. I think kids need to learn to work at what they want to do, whether it be whether it be a musical instrument or you know whatever. Be the best you can be. Do the best you can do. You know. And so on that topic, is there anything you kind of wish? I, I'm not. I'm not really necessarily asking if you have any regrets, but is there anything you ever either could see yourself being good at or ever really wanted to try, but you never got the opportunity to, or you just never got around to it? Like a musical instrument, like a... Oh, I always wanted to play the piano when I was little, and... Uh, that desire kind of die off later on in life? Or? Yeah, I have no musical talent. <laughs> <laughs> Humble, humble. So I could, I mean, I could learn the basics of it, but as far as ever being good, you know, I wouldn't be. Um, That's my opinion with music too. <laughs> I would. Uh, I always thought I would like to paint. You know. Did you ever? Do you paint ever? No, I didn't. You, could I always, did. you always could now. Honestly, you're at a great point in life to start painting. Oh, I know, but I have too many other things to do. You know, and and. I always thought maybe I'd like to write a book. And like maybe Dr. I, Phil. I may do that. You should. You should. I may do that. You really should, Grandma. Oh, you should totally write a book. You'd be a good author. <laughs> I, I, my opinion with writing is that it's all persistence. It's not like you sit down and type for eight hours. I think it's a daily ritual that I, I, maybe an hour of your day for however long. Well, you can do it that way. Uh-huh. But that's how I would do it. Um, the journals and things that I have written in, it's it's just when something's on my mind that I'm thinking about and trying to figure it out, and I'll sit down and I'll write things, mm -hmm. you know, or I'll write about things in my life. And everything. I do the same thing. Yeah. So that's it's more like that than. That's therapeutic. Very therapeutic. That's how you. That's really how you solve problems. Like mm -hmm. writing it down, something about that. Well, it it kind of helps you figure it out. I think sometimes. I. I think the way I, I think things through thoroughly, and if something's bothering me, I'll think it through, and I'll figure out what I'm going to do about it, and then I do it. And if that doesn't work, depending on how serious it is, I'll keep you know, thinking up different things in my mind, but then it gets to a point where I just, I can't do anything about this, so I've got to let it go. Right, right. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Giving so up that I, attachment. Yeah, I would never probably be able to solve the world's problems because I would just let them go. <laughs> I like that. I, I like. think you, I think you choose how you want to live, you know, and you can choose to wallow in self-pity and anger and all that, or you can just say, I'm not going to do that. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to have a happy life no matter what. Right. You know, the, um, you, you try to find what's positive about whatever is bothering you, whatever, you know. And it's and you also have to be humble enough to realize that you can't solve the world's problems. Yeah, as you much know, as you might like you, to. You do what you can do, and then you have to let go. So. It's kind of a whole cold hard truth. Well, it is. You know. You can you can change the world, but yeah, you're right. You can't. You can't impact it, but. I don't. Know, I mean, look at Elon Musk. Look at how much he's done. Uh, there's uh, Andrew Carnegie. Those are two. I mean, Elon Musk, just what he's doing, like his business that he's, all his businesses he's starting, he's like a philanthropist, which is beautiful. But, uh. Well, on... you're, you're given opportunities, and, you know, it may just be a small opportunity. Um, it's just like, I was at, 
I was at the store. I was buying some of that landscaping gravel that we like. You know, we just need a few bags off to finish. Uh -huh. And I was buying that, and it was pretty heavy, and I was pretty tired. And this guy just came over and put it all in my cart for me. Right, right. For a store, you know, so you can do little. Just a things. random guy, like a yeah, customer? just a random guy. Really? Uh, yeah. And uh, I mean, you can do nice things for people all the time if you want to if you use the opportunities right just to so. kind of make this world a little bit better place for all mm -hmm. of us and you're given the opportunities on a daily basis it's just a matter of whether you take it or not mm -hmm. sometimes it's just a kind word you know it's just calling somebody that you know i i personally think the the population being so high is kind of makes makes us a little bit more desensitized to each other which makes it a little bit more... I mean, I'm not saying this is an excuse, but it, just, it makes it a little bit more difficult to, like, treat others. I, and, and again, I'm not using that as an excuse. I just think that's why a lot of people kind of do act that way. I think... I think people have a fear. More of a fear of people today than they used to have. You know, so they don't want to step in and and interfere with somebody or what do you mean a fear of people well it's like I, if i help her is that going is she going to be offended you know that i can't nah. am i saying she can't do this on her own you know true I, I mean i personally don't think that way at all like if i think something's the right way i'm gonna do it yeah i, mean, I have heard that though like somebody will like like somebody will save somebody out of a, like a burning car or something, and then they get they'll get in trouble for uh, doing something like I don't know. I've, yeah. I've heard stories like that. I, I know you're that, talking about. I think the, in a way, you hear those stories, and I don't think the news media helps anything because, you know, ninety percent of their stories or ninety five are negative. Absolutely. And so that's constantly fed into our head that negativity, whereas which is uh, kind of addicting to some mm -hmm. people. So it'd be nice if they. You know, if they talked about the good things that happens, because there's good things that happen every day. Right. You know, but I think technology has made it easier to keep, to reach out and connect with people, you know. So, because you're, um, if I have a minute, a lot of times I'll call somebody and see how they're doing. If I know somebody's not feeling well or having right. a rough time or something, you know. And so I think having my cell phone and being out that makes it so much easier it also gives you a lot more opportunity to make positive choices like you were saying earlier yeah to end it gives you more uh i guess options and uh i don't know you can you could search the web like say you want to find some new ways to make money like you could probably find some ways online you could i uh, started this podcast you know this is this is fun and just a lot more, uh, I guess, opportunities because of the internet, and or like you said, you could uh, you could call somebody or message somebody, just see how they're doing, yeah. see how their day's going. Which honestly, I've, I'm kind of surprised because whenever I went off to college, like my whole thing was, all right, I'm gonna keep in touch with all my good buddies from high school, whatever, uh, and I I did for a while. Like I would message, I don't know, probably 10, 15 people, like. Every few months, I'd be like, hey, how's everything going? Are you doing all right? Everything going well? And people just kind of get lost interest, you know? Well, they move on. They're in a different circle. They're in a different crowd, and they they, um, they move on. And you'll always have those memories, and you'll be connected to those people with those memories. Mm -hmm. But you will all go on to have different lives, and you may or may not run into each other and keep in touch. Right. That's why I always think that you should value the people that are in your life at that time. Absolutely. That's a, that kind of goes back to living in the moment. Yeah. In a way. But I don't know. I, it's not even that I'm nostalgic. It's just like, I, I just, you know, like I'm you like, I'm, I've spent four years, however long. Some people I've, I've spent, I guess, within six years. I've spent six years at school with them. And I'm like, like yo, what, what's up? Are you up? a slow learner? <laughs> Wait, do what? I said, were you a slow learner? It took you longer to get out. <laughs> no. Oh no, no, just no, seventh and eighth grade. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I I just like to I like to keep in touch and I don't know. I just and I, I've just kind of noticed people. Oh, they just don't really care as much as I do personally. So I, I've just kind of resolved to not caring as much. 
I don't know, certain individuals, they, they seem to care as well. And so I kind of stray towards those people, but stray away from the others that don't. Yeah. I... I don't know. I have... I like to keep in touch with people, but it it's difficult when you have so many, you know. So many what? So many people to keep in touch with. True, true. You know. But it's also easier than ever. It is easier than ever. Which you would know better than I would, but... Yeah, I used to have to write letters. <laughs> yeah, really. When we lived in Italy, you know, we would get letters. Because we didn't have the cell phones then. Really? I'm really old. Not even like, like, I don't we, like home telephones or anything? Well, you, we you had can have home, some of my water if you want. No, that's okay. We, have home, we had home telephones, but um, I don't know that we had one. I don't, I don't think we did. So, we were kind of yeah. cut off. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, like, I I know with all this technology as well, though, uh, and I think you would agree with me on this, it's being cut off is like, it, there's something very freeing about that. Oh, yeah. Very freeing, very liberating. I love it when my cell phone doesn't ring for a couple of hours. Yeah, really. I don't know, because especially like uh, my perspective on all these is, I mean, I've, I've had a cell phone since seventh grade, which is, like, I mean, to you that might sound kind of crazy, like, wow, I've had a phone since I was in seventh grade, since I was 13 years old, but in the future, like, if somebody's listening to this podcast in 2050, they're like, wow, he got a, he, he didn't get one until seventh grade, you know? Well, like, you know, Addie, she texts, she's very proficient with the cell phone. Right. And, uh. But that's scary that, like, it's it been such a big part of, like, our lives. Well, it's not... Even my life for that long. It's not scary. I just think that parents today have a really hard job with technology because the kids are so smart and they're so proficient with all this because they've grown up with it. Right, right. You know, and... Uh, it's she, probably going to be good and bad if I had to guess the course of history is going to take with this. Yeah, she's... Uh, She's texts me really, really late at night, you know, and I'm going, where is your mommy? And she's sleeping, and I'm like, okay. I said, you need to hang up this phone and go to bed. How old is Eddie? She's seven. But she's been doing this for a few years now. Well, a year or so anyway with the texting. Okay. And her mother doesn't know it. She would get her phone, and I told her mom, I said, you have to put a, you have to put a lock on your cell phone. So she can't get to it at night. So, so then um, Addie told me she was sleeping, and I said, "Okay." I said, "I guess you better hang up because I'm going to call your dad." <laughs> she, I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> A few years from now, she's going to call your bluff. Yeah. She also probably won't text you though. To be fair. <laughs> oh, she will. I think. I meant like in the middle of the night, like no, something that she in knows, the of the right? Night, she, no. If she knows you're gonna, if she's gonna get in trouble for it. Yeah. She'll be able to outsmart that later. She's very, very smart. But isn't that kind of alarming though? Like to think about, like, I, like how, how, I don't know, like a lot of your grandkids have just grown up with technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm your oldest, and I've had it since I was 13. Yeah, they all text, and uh, except the little ones, I guess the only ones that don't are. Are like, uh, there's maybe four of them that don't. Wow. So. But uh, that's scary because uh, I I just think these things are designed, especially social media, is designed to kind of be addictive. Actually, not even kind of. Like it's intentionally designed to make you addicted, to make you obsessed with this. And I I've found myself days. Like, where there's not, I don't really know what to do. I'll just sit around on my phone all day. It's like, what? This is terrible. So, like, now I'm kind of getting to the point. I'm just like, and I've been here for, like, a year, but it's a struggle. And this is how I realized I actually believe I'm addicted to this stuff. To technology? That, yes. Like, I, that I've tried so much lately, especially the past two weeks. I've made a really big push. But, uh, like, I'll delete my social media, and then I'll, I'll just, I always find a way to get back on. Which this past semester I was living alone, so like that that probably had a little bit to do with it. I'm like, uh, just, I I didn't know what to do a lot of the time, so I I just get on my phone. Versus like now it's a little bit easier because did like, you try studying? <laughs> uh, no, didn't try that. 
<laughs> I'm yeah. going to suggest studying. Well, you've read a lot, though. Yeah, I read like, I probably read like 15 books this semester. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, no, I think even more. I think I read close to, between 15 and 20, something like that. I've read 25 in the past year. But, um, yeah, I mean, my point being is that I just think I'm like, I'm addicted. I, I, well, it's that instant, instant. I want to know what everybody's doing in this instant, mm -hmm. you know, and whereas before, I often wonder when people go to parties and things, what they have to talk about because <laughs> they know everything's going on with everybody. Right. <laughs> so, you know. That's a good point. I never... <laughs> I'm trying to think about talk. It, I guess it depends on. I mean, there's uh, other things. There's ideas and stuff like that you can talk about. Yeah, but I just I don't really. Up. That's why I'm kind of straying away from parties at this point in my life. It's uh, maybe I'm going to the wrong parties, which I'd probably argue that that's what it is. But uh, well, you know how to fix that. Right. Cut yourself. Off. I mean, it is what it is. College. But yeah, I agree. Like. Uh, I think a lot of conversations are just a lot more superficial now. Yeah, it's... Well, for example, like, I've, I've been posting pictures of doing jujitsu. So, like, whenever I go back to school, most likely, whenever I start the semester and I see somebody out, at, say, say we're at a bar, and he's like, hey, like, how, hey, man, how you doing? And, like, they'll know what I'm up to, so it's actually a conversation starter. Like, hey, I've seen you've been posting pictures of jujitsu. Like, I, what what's all that about? Like, wait, how is that? Do you enjoy that? And I'll just like I'll I'll describe my experience of jujitsu to them. Like, yeah, man, it's really it's really cool. It's really humbling. It's awesome. Like, it's a really cool art. So I'll be able to go in depth with like that more more than uh, yeah. So it, in a way, it's actually more of a conversation starter, if anything. Could be, I suppose. Because you know more about each other, and you kind of know the people you seek out because you know what they're into. Versus, like, if, like I have a buddy down at school, and I wouldn't know this if it weren't for social media, but he's been into wakeboarding this summer. He just got into wakeboarding. I've always seen him as a really in interesting guy, but uh, I think that's super cool. So I can't wait to get back to school to like talk to him about that. Like, dude, what's wakeboarding like? Is that cool? Could I maybe go with you a weekend? Like, that's awesome, you know? Well, and and I think like. To keep track of your friends, like in Australia, that you can't see uh -huh. on a regular basis, so that works really well for that. You're you're able to have friends all over the world in different places. True, and uh, that that helps. I think helps make the world a smaller place, more connected. True. Mm -hmm. Then you know, then that that time passing doesn't really feel like that long. Yeah. I haven't really the, kept up with them too much. Sorry, you, what were you saying? You haven't? Yeah, I was going to say, what are they up to? Uh, I, the past, like, two, three months, I haven't. I kept up with them very consistent until about two, three months ago. Which, I mean, that's just time, you know. It's been over a year. Yeah. And that's probably, amazing that it's been a year. It's been, it's been, well, it's been probably a year and two, three months. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So, I'll, I'll probably hit them up again. And, but I, I guess I guess it's not like I haven't been, like, total out of contact like they they probably know what I'm up to I've seen them like my pictures on like social media and stuff so they, they probably have some idea what I'm up to yeah I don't do social media it's good <laughs> I admire that <laughs> I think a lot of it too with the with Instagram is a lot of people like to like almost like prove like hey don't forget about me world you know like I'm still out here and like well I think a lot of it is totally self-centered yeah, it's very because narcissistic. Who cares if you went to the grocery store? Right. Who cares if you took your kids to the library unless something you I like happen? I I what I've noticed is the way I use social media versus I'm not saying everybody uses doesn't use it this way or does, but I I agree. I think a lot of it's narcissism and that they they like to record like it's not, I don't know, a lot of like a lot of people just post like a picture of themselves or they'll like insignificant points of their life, but like me, I like to. I just like to document like highlights of my life. You know, like like tomorrow I'm going jet skiing, so I'll probably, I'll probably take a picture and put that on there because I'm like I'll be on a jet ski. Like I just like to record my life. Like I've, I've yeah. kept a journal for years now. Yeah. 
You'll be glad you did. True. And I think that is, is that, so that in the future, whenever I'm looking at it, whenever my kids are looking at it, whenever whoever's looking at it, they can be like, wow, this is the, like, this is kind of a life you lived, you know? And I want to, I don't, I don't want to like, it's not like I, like, I'm fine. Like if I go tomorrow and I go jet skiing and I don't get a picture, I don't care. I mean, I still got to, I still got the experience. Yeah. But if the opportunity presents itself, yeah, I'll probably end up taking a picture. But, uh, it's well, not like yeah. I'm attached to that outcome, you Somebody know? there will probably take a picture. Right, right. <laughs> and it, regardless, it doesn't matter that much because I still went. But, like, I like to document those moments. Like, like if it's if it's if if it was a good day, because then a picture is so powerful that you can look back. It's like music. You can look back and kind of feel what you were feeling on that day, like how that day felt. Well, I've had, I've had people that live in different states and things so that are relatives say, oh, I saw pictures of your grandkids or right, stuff right. like that. I just, uh, it's fine if that's what you want to do. I'm just more a private person, I think. That's good. That's I good. I just uh, like to keep, I like the personal touch. And I don't want to tell everybody. I have such a, <laughs> such a boring life anyway. I don't want to tell everybody what I'm doing. No. <laughs> Uh, I think you have a pretty cool life. Oh, I love my life. No, that's that's good. That's a that's like anti narcissism. That's uh, I I I respect that a lot, and I appreciate that a lot because it's such a problem. The exact opposite, such a problem with so many people my age that I like. I really I really appreciate that. That's awesome. That's cool. And I, I like that perspective a lot more. What do you think? Should we wrap this up? I think so. Your grandpa, I think, is cooking. Yeah. <laughs> we should go see what he's got. Yeah, really. <laughs> see if he has almond milk. Yeah. He said he was. He might not be able to get it where he was going. So. Oh, right about an hour. Almost an hour.